You know what? I bet Mr. Nice Guy isn't even actually all that nice. Think about it. Hmm? How the heck is President Trump going to get re-elected? That's a good question, and one, at first glance, without any obvious convincing answer. After all, Trump's job approval rating is in the low 40s at best. Half the country thinks he should be impeached and removed from office. He does something almost every single day that defines the office of the presidency, bloop, downward. But Trump won once, won once, which means that assuming he can't do it again, makes an ASS out of you and me, get it? Uh, sidebar, yes, I know that's a dad joke. I'm a dad, I get to tell those jokes. Also, sidebar to the sidebar, all of my favorite shows are on PBS. And sidebar, and sidebar to the sidebar. And we now have a pretty good indication of how exactly Trump is going to try to convince a skeptical public that he deserves four more years. So during Game 7 of the World Series, go Nats, President Donald Trump's campaign launched a seven-figure national ad buy, a 30-second commercial touting his first-term accomplishments on, among other things, terrorism, the economy, and immigration. President Trump is changing Washington, creating 6 million new jobs, 500,000 new manufacturing jobs, cutting illegal immigration in half, obliterating ISIS. The real key to that ad, and the bit that you need to pay very close attention to, comes in the final moments of the commercial, when the narrator says this of Trump, quote, he's no Mr. Nice Guy, but sometimes it takes a Donald Trump to change Washington, end quote. So those two sentences are of huge import, and whether people buy into them or not will almost certainly tell you if Trump is going to be president in 2021. So what's clear from that tagline, no Mr. Nice Guy, sometimes you need a Donald Trump, is that the campaign understands how very poorly this president is perceived on a bevy of personality traits. So he's not seen as friendly or kind, or empathetic, or even really someone you'd want to spend a bunch of time around, or even any time around. Candidly, a lot of people just really don't like him, which is a problem for most politicians. If your job is to get people to vote for you, then lots of them not liking you is a bit of a roadblock. The Trump team does know this to their credit, which is why this ad tries to turn people's negative views of Trump on their heads. So what the ad suggests is that in order to fix a place as broken as Washington, D.C., you need someone who doesn't care about whether you like him or not, or whether anyone likes him or not, who only cares about the bottom line, the results. In a bumper sticker, the campaign messaging that this ad appears to preview goes something like this. Yeah, he's a jerk, but he's a jerk who gets results. The underlying argument here is that for too long, voters elected presidential-looking and presidential-sounding politicians, people who played nice with one another, who gave predictable speeches, who went to all the Washington dinners and made friends with all the members of the media. And look where that got us. It screwed the average Joe while these so-called elites feathered their own nests. Trump's lack of manners, his bullying, his at times outrageous and dangerous rhetoric are, under this formulation, simply proof points of how different he is than all of the failed politicians who have come before him. Democrats don't like him. Even some Republicans don't like him. The media is outraged. Good, they should be. That's the whole <clears throat> point. There's at least some reason to believe that that sort of positioning, politically speaking, could work for Trump. The 2016 exit poll, just a poll of everyone who voted, or at least portions of people who voted, explains why. Just one in three voters said that Trump was honest and trustworthy. He won one in five voters who said he wasn't honest or trustworthy. About the same number, 35%, said Trump had the temperament to be president. Again, he won one in five voters who said he didn't have the right temperament to be president. Ah, voters. In virtually every previous election, those numbers guarantee a loss. After all, how does a candidate that two-thirds of the country thinks isn't honest and doesn't have the right temperament to be president wind up being president? The answer, at least in the last election, is also contained in that exit poll. Asked which candidate quality mattered most to them in deciding their vote, almost four in 10, 39%, named can bring change. Of that group, Trump won 82% of their votes to 14% for Hillary Clinton. So the desire for radical change in Washington uh, trumped 
absolutely everything else in these critical voters' minds. They were so sick of the status quo that they're willing to vote for someone in Trump who they neither liked nor trusted. Which, take a break and a pause, is a remarkable thing. Now the question for Trump, for the country, for the Democratic nominee, for all of us in 2020, is whether voters' desire for change is still as strong as it was in 2016. And whether they still think that Trump, who will have been president for four years by that time, is actually a change agent or just a charlatan. Now what's clear is that Trump is going to embrace, well, Trumpiness as a virtue, not a vice. So make the case that you don't need to like the president, you just have to like the results the president brings about. And honestly, that's a pretty good message that just might work. And that is the point. We make new point episodes every Tuesday, Thursday, and now Saturday too. Check them all out.